All right. Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Racers News Network Live. And we are going to have some fun tonight. I'll tell you what. Pete's driving home. He's going to try not to try not to go off the road. And uh, we're going to be talking to our special guest in just a few minutes. Of course, I'm talking about Pista Fritz. Notice I put the emphasis on it so I wouldn't mess it up. I told you I only have four, four screw-ups left. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, but a lot of great action from this past weekend. And um, one of the big reasons that I wanted to talk to Kista and um, Pete did as well is that she is smack dab in the epicenter of one of the biggest drag racing events. I guess we can fairly say the world. And um, <laughs> I have never met her. Uh, I saw a lot of pictures of of stuff that she put up at the U.S. Nationals, um, pictures people took of her at the U.S. Nationals. And um, I had the chance to ask around to some of our friends out in the Midwest about you, um, and they have nothing but glorious things to say about you. And um, we're very proud to have you join us tonight and kind of give us an, a, a look into Kista, the NHRA employee, how long you've been involved in motorsports, how you got involved in motorsports, and like I said, how it feels to be smack dab in the middle of the U.S. Nationals. Wow, that was that was a lot to cover right there. So, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're going to have to start with one question. <laughs> like, I got started with it when I was tiny. My dad used to build engines. So, you know, I can remember helping him, you know, bore out engines and things like that, you know, out in the garage when I was, you know, just old enough to toddle. Uh, he had this, I think it was a 78 Z28 and it ran on the high octane and shot flames out the back. And I remember just begging him to start that just so I could, I could stand there and vibrate and scream. And it's just been in my blood ever since. So That's very cool. Yeah. Uh, have you ever had the chance to get out on the track and compete? No, I feel like if I get into a car, you'll probably never get me back out. <laughs> but it, it, I think it would be a, a lot of fun to do it, though. Very cool. Uh, Pete, Pete knows what it's like with some of his kids now, too. He's going through through that with uh, especially his, one of his sons. So it's getting him in there and yep. well, made the mistake of getting him in there. And now it's kicking and screaming to get him out of it, to get him home. I can understand that completely. Yeah, you could only ask them to hang around the track for so long before they want to get involved. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> so, um, I mean, let's let's hit it. How how did you get involved with NHRA? Um, a few years back, I just noticed that they had a post on the Facebook website for IRP here, and um, they were looking for track help. So I thought, well, I can probably do that. And I interviewed and they're like, well, where do you want to be? So I just kind of pointed out the window. I'm like, right there. They said the water box. I said, absolutely. Can you, unless you can put me in a car, put me in the water box. Cause that's the closest I could get. So I worked there uh, for a few years doing water box, then ready line uh, staging. And last year at the U S nationals, um, I was introduced to William and I was like, how do I get into the travel side of everything? And he said, well, give me your information. So we started talking and he said, do you, you, is this something that you really like? I said, absolutely. I said, I would quit my job tomorrow if I could do this full time. And within minutes, I had the application for the coordinator position. And here I am. Very cool. Now, go ahead, Pete. Oh no! I'm just saying that's awesome. How it all, how it all yeah, came about. It just, I mean, you li literally started in the water box, and the next thing you know, you're you're the coordinator. <laughs> that's that's pretty impressive. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. Now, what does the coordinator do at an event? Let's let's 
kind of we'll skip over the U.S. Nationals because that's a that's a story within itself. But <laughs> on a regular divisional event, what is your responsibility day to day and throughout the 12, 16, 20 hours that you're out on the track? Yeah. Um, well, I had to get my CDL. So I drive the division truck plus the trailer to whatever race we're going to. Um, I unload the trailer and usually have a, quite a bit of help, actually, because, you know, there's a lot to pull out. Uh, we clear out the trailer, uh, hang the banners, get contingency forms ready, um, you know, get all the things up to the tower that need to go to the tower. I have the, the coolers and everything ready for our staff so that we make sure they stay hydrated and fed, um, you know, and then there's just a lot of running here, there, yawn, and, you know, sometimes it's around track, sometimes it's, you know, into town to get more supplies, or, you know, sometimes it's three and four trips a day into town to get supplies, so, you know, there's just quite a bit, and, you know, just, just basic support of the track we're at, you know, our event workers, my you know my director just wherever they need me very cool go ahead pete so um i guess i'm going to ask the question that uh, most people are going to want to ask in d1 uh, how did it come about that uh, all the licensing and stuff for d1 got sent over to d3 uh d is kind of short-staffed right now so, you know, we just, we're just jumping in to help until they can get somebody in place to, you know, that, that's going to be able to keep up with it. So nobody gets behind, um, you know, a few years back, we had to get some help. You know, it's just kind of one of the things that the divisions do for each other. If somebody needs help, then, you know, we'll fly out to help. We'll jump in to help. We'll, we'll help take some of your burden. So, so but we all so work this together is that something way. that's, this is something that's happened before, correct? It's not absolutely unprecedented. Yeah. No, absolutely. no, no. Um, we, like I said, we all just kind of work together. And anybody who needs help, you know, all you have to do is say so, and and we've got you. You know, we all help that's each awesome. other that way. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. So, all right. So basically, it's just a matter of D one being a little short staffed, and once they get back on their feet, it'll be business as usual. Absolutely. Excellent. Yeah. All right. Well, that that makes things a lot simpler than the rumors that have been floating around. That's for sure. And uh, uh, from, no from someone from someone in D one that uh, recently had to get my license renewed. Uh, thank you and your staff for picking up the slack. We really appreciate. You are very it. welcome. You are very welcome. So now that that's out of the way. Tell us about Indy. I need to hear about Indy because <laughs> I've never been. <laughs> they call it the Super Bowl of drag racing. So, you know, it's, it, it's six, it, day, what, six days. So yep. it's, it's I, something I watch, else, man. We have <laughs> competitors, obviously, from D1 that head out there. And it yeah. it is the definition of a marathon, not a sprint. Um, that's it's, the it's a truth. very long yeah it, it's it's a long event but i don't care how exhausted or beat up people are when they leave there uh i've never heard anyone say that they regret the experience and they don't want to go back no no i agree with that 100 percent. you know it's it's just something that you have to experience at least once in your life you know, whether it's from the spectator perspective, the racer, the crew, just, I mean, just, just go, just go once you will. Yeah, come back, I mean, I <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I, I would love to race there. Um, but at least the first time I would be happy just going there. Um, I would definitely want to be in the pitch helping someone or, or being part of some kind of a team. Uh, versus just sitting in the stands, but man, I sure would love to attend Indy someday. That's for sure. Yeah, you you de definitely need to come and see us. So oh. we go out. Do you attend PRI by any chance? I do, I do. I went last year, and I'll be there again this year. No, very cool. Because I think we might be going this year. So 
Um, I we usually go like every other year, um, mm-hmm. and this is our on year coming up. So uh, if we oh, very cool. head out there, we'll definitely have to get together and have a drink or something at some point. Oh, for sure, please. Excellent. So with with the U.S. Nationals, what's what's planning that event like? Was it the Tuesday after Labor Day? You were already looking at stuff and going, okay, well, we're going to start planning this for next year. Uh, no, or do you get actually, a little bit of a mental break from it. Yeah, no, they they started planning for next year uh, a few months ago. The, it, the, wow. I'm not part of the planning committee per se. So, you know, I can't speak to what they do, but I, I do know that they've already started, uh, you know, hitting up their their sponsors and their their um, vendors and things like that, trying, you know, getting stuff set up. You know, there's there's a lot of parking that goes into it because, you know, when you're pulling in that many people, you know, we really have to plan everything out very particularly. Right. So there's a lot of it. Wow. Could you imagine they start planning for the next year before the current year even happens? Absolutely. I Absolutely. can't even figure out what I'm going to have for dinner at lunchtime. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> I don't know what I'll have for dinner after this. <laughs> <laughs> so a couple of things in the comments um, from our buddy, Jason Lawrence. Uh, he said, Pete, this is your best angle. <laughs> And uh, Jared yeah. Artis, who's a, <laughs> and uh, Jared Artis, who's a who's a friend of ours, and obviously he's a, she's, he's a friend of yours as well. Yeah. Um, said your hair is looking great. <laughs> Thanks, Jared. <laughs> oh, I thought he was talking uh, to me. Steve Zachary, uh, hey there, Krista. Always, always there. Uh, hey there, Krista. <sighs> Wait a minute. Keystone. That's three Keystone. times right there. Three. That's three. Uh, oh, she's always there to help. And uh, Rob Keister from Mid Atlantic Dot Ninety said he met you out in uh, Norwalk. Yep. Yeah, he sure did. Yeah, we kind of have a running joke now. So <laughs> <laughs> I've tried to yeah. tell him that if we were to get married, my name would be Keista Keister, and all he heard was if we were to get married, and he that was it. <laughs> he, he locked onto that part. Yep. And yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Hi, Rob. <laughs> All right. So again, like Pete said, you know, it's a it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. What is it like running around there? Just, I mean, I, I, you've kind of touched on everything that you do. You know, you you can make sure everybody's taken care of, fed, watered, yeah. and you know, checking in with the racers, the sponsors. Mm-hmm. Is it just kind um, of like Monday night? You're like oh, finally. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, we do have a lot of uh, pedestrian traffic. So one of the things I kind of jump in and help with is making sure people don't get mopped as they go pat- across the uh, return lane. Yeah. Because, you know, when they come, uh, you haven't been there. So, but when you're walking across the return lane, there's giant cement pillars and people will not look as they're walking through. Their their heads are down or they're looking at something else. And, you know, it, it amazes me at how many people will just step inches in front of a car that's coming through there. So it's just, you know, we do have a lot of security. However, they can't catch everybody and I'm kind of loud and, you know, <laughs> in people's faces. So I don't hesitate to grab a hold of somebody. I've grabbed a hold of them and spun them around before, you know, because they just don't look. And that terrifies me that somebody's going to get hurt at one of our events. So, right. yeah, you know, it's whole, just when you're at the track, head is always on a swivel yeah. because everything's on wheels and it's moving way faster than you are. Yep. That's the whole saving your ass, whether you like it or not moment. Yeah. 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 So, good. But, you know, I mean, it, there's a lot of running around. There's a lot of um, just... I don't want to call it cleanup. It's just like things that I probably forgot to do beforehand. So I have to run and take care of that or, you know, something that, you know, oh, we didn't even realize we needed this. So, you know, just, just so much. There's right. so much, but I like taking time to be in the lanes and talk to the racers and the crews. And, you know, it's just, it's a, an awesome thing walking out there and just 
you know, seeing the superstars of our sport and they, they know the blue hair. So I've been to a few national events, so they do kind of recognize me on occasion. So, you know, it's just really cool to just be able to catch up with them. That's awesome. Yeah. So, so have you ever figured out how many hours a week you actually work? All of them. <laughs> There's a lot. I, I don't the do the math have... because it's a salary thing. <laughs> yep. yep. I don't want to yep. cry. <laughs> Is is the off season calmer for you, or are you working just as hard in the off season as you are when they're racing? Well, this will be my second off season, but my my first one, I was you know I had to go to school to get my CDL, so that mm-hmm. took a month and a half. You know, plus I had all the training and stuff that I was doing here in the office. You know, William is telling me all these things that I you know are going to come up at different races, and when we go to this one, we'll park here. And he's, he's got it mapped out. He has quite a, uh, I don't know, a, a whole system. So, you know, and some of the things that he was telling me last off season didn't really make a whole lot of sense. And then they're all on the property and I'm like, got it, got it. It's all coming together. Right. So right. he spends a lot of time just giving me all the information that my little brain can handle right. and then some. And like I said, sometimes it doesn't make sense when he's telling me, but then when we do roll up or something starts, I'm like, got it. It'll click. So, yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Well, hopefully this year's off season will be a little more mellow for you now that you got all your training and CDL under your belt. Well, I have a better idea of what I need to get done. So, and I've already kind of got started on that so far. So nice. When does, uh, when does the racing in your division wrap up? Um, in our division, our last race is the Fall Classic in October. It's the 21st and 22nd. And that's the end of it? Uh, yeah, I'll head out to Dallas for the Super Quick uh, All-Stars. And then I'll probably go to Vegas and Pomona, maybe. Oh, very nice. Nice. So I'll finish out with, you know, the national side. I try to start with the national side so I can get a few of those in before our season starts. And then I end up, you know. Just because, you know, I don't want to be done yet. <laughs> yeah, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys have your bracket finals yet? Uh, we just had them this last weekend. Last weekend, yeah. yeah, I thought stuff from D3. Very good. Yeah, now that was, just... was a lot of fun. That was it a lot of fun. Did. How good? Uh, yeah, we had, we had a little weather on Saturday, so we didn't get to finish up Saturday. It's sprinkle. We get the track dry and then it'd sprinkle and then we get the track dry and we finally said let's finish it tomorrow did did you guys struggle with with weather as much this year as we did in the northeast um probably not quite as much as you guys did up north um we started off our first race in april was down at st louis and it was cold and it was windy and it was rainy and (laughs) it was rough so and then I think our first jegs here, we got, we do double headers with our jegs events. So we got the first one in, we could get the second one in. Yeah. So we did have to, you know, there was another one that we had to reschedule. So yeah, we had quite a bit of weather in here. Yeah. It's, it's been a rough year for the tracks locally around here. That's for sure. It's yeah. just one of yeah, those I've years. Seen a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> We we weren't far removed from snow in June with the National Holy cow. in New England. I'm not a cold weather girl. I no, do not I'm, like cold. I'm sitting in my office in my vest and a long sleeve. <laughs> I don't you. like cold. <laughs> I'm not a fan. I don't even like racing in the beginning of the year because it's usually still cold and windy. And it just right. doesn't feel the season yet, you know? No, I agree with that. So, Yeah. If the weather would cooperate a little bit better, it'd be great. <laughs> it would. You might have to transfer to D2 so you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm I'm kind of partial to my D3. I got a lot of people here that are just outstanding and amazing. So, How many now bench do you guys have in D3? Four. You do have four. Oh, my God. I'm we jealous. do have four. Wow. We have Chicago, uh, Norwalk, Indy, and St. Louis. Very we nice. just it did Indy, so we'll do St. Louis and oh, it's next week. 
Very cool. I just had a question that fell right out of my head. I have that happen a lot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> how's so, the how's the chat section, Chris? Uh, let's see. Jared said uh, he might see you in Pano in Pomona, maybe. Um, cool. Pretty quiet. Uh, Rob wants to know if you teleported from your car to your living room. <laughs> no, 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 I didn't. I have I my teleporter broke. <laughs> <laughs> and also, Rob said that was that was his dad, not him. Oh, okay, okay, all right. So fair. <laughs> now, how many people work in your office? Three. Three. So yeah, have... there's William, the director, yep. me, and then our administrator, Deanna. Very cool. Deanna is our licensing queen. She's amazing. She gets more licensing done than I could even imagine. So. And do you know right now how many people D1 have in their office? Um, I do not. I know they have Craig, and right. I believe that their admin is or their coordinator is out currently, which is why they're having issues getting the licensing process. Craig's gotcha. out on the road quite a bit, so... You know, so, you know, we just help him out. They're down a minimum of one person, and it could possibly be two. Right. 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 So I mean, that's uh, the writing's on the wall as far as why yeah. they had to transfer the licensing over to you guys. So. Absolutely. And anyone who has seen a business or owned a business knows what it's like to try and get help these days. So it really, yeah. really shouldn't be a surprise to anyone as to. You know, if something's going through staffing issues, right? That's for sure. Right. I think everybody's short staffed now. <laughs> How do you guys do as far as all the other personnel that that it takes to pull off an event? Uh, as far as staffing, you know, safety people, track employees, all this. I mean, I know you don't do much with individual track employees, but it sure takes a no. hell of a lot of our NHRA people to pull off an event. Uh, how is yeah, it like? Yeah, we have a. Nice. Yeah, we ha we have our own uh, D3 staff that travel with us quite a bit. Yep. We have a safety crew. Of, I think we have, we can pick and choose between 10 to 12, I think. Um, and when I say pick and choose, you know, I send out a list, they send me their availability and that's what, that's what we run with. Sure. We have several staging crew. We have, you know, our, our tower crew. We have registration, you know, we've got, a, and we've got a killer tech crew. So, you know, I mean. So there's, good. there's something I, I actually, I heard from a D1 NHRA employee. Um, we were talking about people that complain about NHRA and how they don't want the sportsman racer and all they care about is the pros. And I was pretty friendly with this particular person. And he said to me, he said, all the employees that are here at the track, 75 to 80% of them are there for the sportsman racer. Yeah. And is, is that something that, that you agree with? I believe, to be honest, I mean, I think we're all there for the sportsmen. All I right. think, um, I do think that the pros get a bigger following because they're louder and they're, you know, they go faster. Oh, without a doubt. So, yeah. you know, I mean, and, you know, that's, that's kind of all I can really think of, to be honest. But I mean, you know, our sportsmen are our bread and butter. Yeah, I, wow. I mean, I always was under the the impression that when you go to a national event, it's about the pros and it's about the people coming to see the pros. Now, granted, I know it's big for sportsman racers and when a sportsman racer competes and wins in a national event, it's like the biggest thing ever for them. Yes. But at yes. the end of the day, it, it's, I mean, there are way more people that are there to see John Force do a burnout halfway down the track than there is to see Pete Sanker's throttle stop turn on eight feet off the starting <laughs> line 
and everyone wondering what the hell just happened. Um, you know, it, it drives me crazy when people say, oh, NHRA doesn't care about the sportsman racer. Yeah. They'd rather not see him there. And to me, it's when you have to have 50 people at an event and 40 of them are there for sportsman tech, for sportsman paperwork, for sportsman contingency. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Yes. It, just, it doesn't make any sense to me that people think the way they think just because they're mad that their time trial got bumped because of the TV schedule for the pros. Right. Right. And I can agree with that. Um, you know, I mean, everybody knows John Force's name. Right. So, I mean, it, it makes sense that I'm going to go see somebody who's famous that I can see on TV all the time. Right. You know, but in all honesty, you know, our sportsmen are some of the finest people in the, in the entire world. U.S. and in, in the world. I love our sportsmen. You know, I mean, since I've started my position or since we've started this season, my friends list on Facebook alone has over tripled, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. and I mean, and these are people that I can see every weekend. You know, I, I get to know them. I get to know their families. I get to know, you know, how how their dogs are doing, you right. know, and the pros travel coast to coast, you know, I'm not going to see them all the time. Right. So, you know, our sportsmen are the ones that we, you know, we get to know inside and out. So, you know, they have my heart. <laughs> so, so you're the perfect example of a NHRA employee that loves sportsman racers. Absolutely. I would like and, to hope so anyway. <laughs> yeah. Tell you that even the people that that complain are still very friendly with all the NHRA employees when they go to an event. I mean, yeah. some of the people that I adore the most at a race are people that work staging and work tech uh, and, you know, pull you into the burnout box and all that stuff. And I mean, I love those people and, and yeah. they would do anything for me just like I would for them. So that's one of the reasons why I get so pissed when they say NHRA doesn't care about the sportsman racer. Well, I mean, right. all these people care about us, you know. Absolutely. You know, we obviously can't speak for the people that are in Glendora sitting behind a desk uh, that make all the rules. But, you know, I guarantee you, if you ask one of them, I don't think too many of them would say they hated the sportsman racer. So. No, you know, I mean, and that's where we get our pros. You start somewhere, right? So, you know, I mean, that's, like I said, there are bread and butter, there are hearts. So it does hurt when I, because I hear it as well. Right. You know, right. and it's, I feel like part of it is because they're not televised as often, you know, is, is you know, the, the TV time doesn't, doesn't encompass our sportsmen as often. So, you know, and I, I don't know if that's what it is, but, you know, I mean, I'd have them on TV every day. Right. I mean, listen, when McDonald's is paying to advertise during a show, yeah, they want to pay to advertise in between John Force and Tony Schumacher. They right. don't want to advertise in between me and Chris. Right. I mean, <laughs> It's listen, right. it would be colorful, no doubt, but it's still <laughs> you know, it'd it, be it, very yeah. short lived. <laughs> yeah, I, I, at the amount of people that forget that at the end of the day, it's a business, and right. the only way the sportsman people are going to keep their playground is if NHRA keeps making the business decisions that keep that possible. Yeah. I, I agree. All right, I got to jump into the comments real quick. Uh, Leah Wolf says, That's my mama. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> uh, David Silva said, Hair is on point. Thanks, David. <laughs> and Dennis Schwartz said, Do not forget the starter. The hair. He said, the hair. What? Yeah. 
<laughs> it's got to be you guys. It's, it <laughs> is, you know. I I do have to say this. One of the things that made me, like I said, when I when I talked to you initially, was you you have that personality that you like. You reach out and you grab a hold of somebody and say, "Look at me," you know, <laughs> and and the hair too, the sunglasses, that picture. I honestly, I don't know you, you know, yeah. I, I would like to meet you, you know, hopefully maybe at PRI or at some point in time in life. Absolutely. Um, but you have that personality to just, you jump out in front of people and go, here I am. Yes. And Look I do that me. quite often. <laughs> I, you know? I do that a lot. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, and it, my favorite thing to say is I hate to that. It's refreshing to see that in a, yeah. in a, business like this where you don't see you know and this this is not a dig in any way shape or form at you because my wife has purple hair <laughs> we so, had that discussion <laughs> yeah and um you know it's refreshing to see somebody that you know you're walking around and it's like lasers and moonbeams bouncing off of you you know what i mean <laughs> it's just it's cool well thanks you're welcome you know i like just, to say that I hate people, but when I'm at the racetrack, those aren't people. Those are my people. I love my people. You know, I feel like I am my best self at the track. You know, I can be my truest self at the track. And, you know, just being around everybody is just so much fun. I'm dancing, I'm singing, I'm laughing, I'm carrying on, you know, I'm, it's just a thing. You know, I just feel like I'm most energized there and it's great. You're in your element. Absolutely. Yep. Just so you know, all those nice things that Chris said about you, he said that all about me too when we first met. So yeah, lies. That's fair. It's all, it's I mean, I can see it lies. out of you. I see the laser beams now. <laughs> I am the definition of a moonbeam, aren't I? He's, he's the definition of something. We're still trying to six or seven <laughs> years later, we're still trying to figure out what the hell it is, though. Yeah. <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> Well, listen, we greatly appreciate you giving us the inside scoop uh, of an NHRA employee and a, you know, D3 coordinator. Um, it's well, nice to get behind the scenes. Uh, it's nice to get rid of some uh, myths or mystery that's going on uh, within our own division. Um, it's yeah. great to have a breath of fresh air on with us. We appreciate it. Well, I truly appreciate the invite. I was really nervous, and but you know, you guys are fantastic. So thank you for making me feel comfortable. As, as you can tell, with me driving in a truck and a dog barking in the background, there's nothing to be nervous about. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> awesome, Keisha. Well, thank you again for your time, and um, I hope you enjoyed it. And I did. If if anybody has any complaints, make sure they direct them to him down there that guy right there that guy that guy right there yeah. <laughs> i get beat up enough mostly by him but <laughs> yeah. but i've gotten much better over the past year yeah you have or i have i have okay all right if you I say so right. i'm finally growing up even though i'm like five years older than him i'm finally growing up oh i will i will never grow up i may get older but i'm not gonna grow up well all right, all right maybe yeah i uh, refuse all right, maturing uh, all right maybe no. we'll go to maturing no, not that either. If, if I find my way out to PRI this year, I'll be sure to look you up and we'll get together. Yeah, please do. Please do. All right. Absolutely. You guys have a great night. And thanks again for the invite. It was fun. All, All right. right. Please, take care. All right. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Maybe. <laughs> All right. Keister Fritz, our guest tonight from uh, the, the division coordinator from NHRA Division Three. And it was it was cool to get, um, you know, like you said, some some real information about what goes on, what it takes, what it what it's all about. You know, this one of the reasons why I brought up the the people pissing and moaning about NHRA not liking the sportsman racer is because I bought into that. Right, there was a time where. I watched the quota drop from 80 to 60. I'm just pulling numbers out, but you know what I mean. Uh, 80 to 60, or uh, at a national event, we had 
on a Monday because weather came in and uh, the, they had to get the pros off for the TV schedule, right? And, and I bit into all that. Yeah, they really do hate us. We're just fillers. They don't care about us. And and in talking to an NHRA employee, and when they said that, it was eye-opening for me. So one of the reasons why I brought that up, and I have brought that up a couple of times, is because I'm hoping that when you hear that from another NHRA employee, that the light bulb could go off like it did for me. It's like common sense, right? If they didn't want us, they would uh, get rid of us, cut their work crew by 80% and just have pros there with a couple of exhibition cars and jet and wheelie cars and call it an event, right? Yep. Okay, um, thanks. What's next? Yeah. Yeah, you know, and, and like I said, when I talked to that NHRA employee and they told me that, I really had to step back and think about it and be like, yeah, yeah that kind of makes sense. Um, and like I said, that's that's why I bring that up, because I'm hoping that uh, it could be eye opening for other people, too, if they hear it. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's just like what we talked briefly about yesterday morning, you know, with there was no confirmed information about exactly what was going on with tickets at the last national event right you know this side is saying yeah you got to you got to pay what was it 25 bucks this side is saying yeah you can still use your ticket from yesterday that is the thing that i think drives me the nuttiest where it, i that pushes me over the edge it's, all right let somebody just needs to come out and say okay it's 25 bucks right like or it's you know, if you like you said, if you're a new person coming in, it's 25 bucks. If you were here yesterday and you still have your ticket, come on in, join the fun. Right. Let's let's right. get let's do this. Instead of going back and forth with you gotta pay, you don't gotta pay. You you know, it's like right. It'd so be I fun to go stand over here and bang my head against the wall sometimes. Right. So I, I definitely understand both sides of the argument. Right. Yeah. And and hats off to the Koretskis for doing what they did. But, you know, we say it all the time, right? At the end of the day, it's a business. So if the business didn't plan on being open on Monday and they didn't plan on spending money on prep, they didn't plan on paying employees. They didn't plan on any of that stuff. And there was a decent amount of racing that happened the day before. I could understand the need or the want to charge people coming in through the gate, right? Because this is a big expense. When you're supposed to be wrapping all your shit up and pulling out of the gate on Sunday afternoon, and all of a sudden you have another full day of work ahead of you, along with the expense of all the vehicles that are driving up and down the track, the traction compound, the rubber wearing off the tires on the rotator. I mean, it just, the list goes on and on. That is a big expense that they didn't plan on doing. Um, now, some people could be rolling their eyes saying, oh, NHRA has enough money. They don't need more, whatever. It's a business. All right. It's, it's, and it's, it's not just NHRA. Maple Grove, has people that they have to pay. They got to pay their uh, people that work in the tower, their concession people, their, their whatever people, you know. And I'm not always the biggest flag waver, and I fully admit that. But yesterday was was just nuts with, okay, you are you are paying, you're not paying. Just somebody show up and put it put it down and say, all right, the communication is is what, kills a lot of things i think i really do it probably yeah again hats off to the koretskis for stepping up and saying no if they were here on sunday they're not paying for monday right right they're considering a rain out people paid to see four rounds of professional racing they only saw two so the other two are going to be on us right we're uh, going to give them what they paid for right. 
hats off to them. The only thing that I can say, and it's not anything against them, but like you said, it sure would have been nice. I mean, everyone, including the Koretskis and NHRA, knew that people were going to be coming through the gate on Monday. So how about let's have a game plan so that there is no confusion, right? Make an announcement when you rained out on Sunday, make an announcement and plast it all over the internet. If you were here on Sunday and you present your check for Monday, you're free. Yeah. If you got Monday off from work and you weren't here on Sunday, you're going to pay X amount of dollars to get in the game. That would limit a boatload of confusion. Right. But it could also have been assumed by NHRA that we're charging everyone and assumed by the Koretskis that it was going to be a rain date for people holding tickets on Sunday. So in all their minds, they might have been thinking, well, this is the way it's going to be, so there's no need to make an announcement. So, I mean, listen, at the end of the day, there was confusion, and they cleared it up pretty quickly. Uh, so that's good, and, and I believe that they all did the right thing, which is also good. Um, you know, it would be really nice if we could have a full event at Maple Grove and not worry about weather. <laughs> That's what that's where rain is created, though. <laughs> it is so it's all crazy. those friggin' trees, man. I Maybe mean, we looked at I know our, our good friend of the show, Billy, was posting weather. He started on like Monday, posting the extended forecast for the whole weekend, and it looked beautiful and everyone was excited. And oh my god, this is gonna be great. And the next thing you know, Saturday like halfway through an absolutely stellar, beautiful day, you started hearing the rumblings of it, we're going to start early on Sunday because weather's coming in. It's like, come on, you've made it three and a half days with nothing. And now you, you can't get it the last half of Sunday. And because they, yeah, they said it was going to be like about two o'clock on Sunday and about two, two thirty. The update stopped. Right. So I messaged somebody who was there. I'm like, is it raining? Yep. Uh, that's what I figured. Yeah. It, it's just, it's too bad. I mean, it, it would, so it's supposed to come in at two. It would have been nice if they were wrong in the good direction and it didn't come in until four or five, right? Because then they would have been done. Right. Uh, but it, it's yeah. just, you hate so, to say anything is cursed, but. Man, if you could make it through a whole national event at Maple Grove without any weather, it's like biblical. <laughs> I mean, luckily, going into Monday, it's not that big a deal because they, you know, they only have to truck down to North Carolina. Right, right. It's not like they're they're racing at Maple Grove Monday and they have to go to, uh, you know, somewhere out west. Well, look at what happened with New Hampshire and Indy. Right. Right. I mean, that's that's a disaster. And it, it's a double disaster because Indy starts on like friggin Tuesday. Right. So it just made it a nightmare. But yeah, this this schedule is a lot more forgiving with the schedule itself and the distance that they have to go. Thank God. Right. I mean, even with the national event in New England, they had Bristol the next weekend, which. Uh, all right. Yeah, it's a little bit more of a haul than, you know, going somewhere in mid Atlantic or even right. in the Southland. But you know, kind of go, go to North Carolina and take a right. But, yep. Yep. you know, a lot of people were saying, they were saying, you know, if it's not done by Tuesday, then we're going to have to think long and hard about this one because they needed to be in Bristol by Wednesday, I think it was. Oh, okay. So, so they, they went from the New Hampshire. I believe it was Bristol. I can double check no, no, schedule. No. For Labor Day, so they went right from. No, no, went... I'm talking about the national event, not not the divisional, because it was oh, the oh, divisional okay. about the national makeup. Yes, Just... the divisional was the weekend before the U.S. Nationals. Right, right, yeah. The that's national the one... event at right. New England was the weekend prior to Bristol. Right, right. So yeah, no, I, I was actually referring to the sportsman national event makeup. 
And, and man, I'll tell you what, of, how big of a disaster that was because they had to finish that on Monday. And I'm sure there were some people there that wanted to go to Indy. They they got done at like 3.30 on Monday. On Monday, right. Yeah. So my, my understanding was that they had a list going in the tower that if you were racing at Indy, you know, you could go up, run up to the tower, give whoever it was your name so right. that they would have um, uh, a pit spot. They'd have a guaranteed pit spot. Wow, they would do that for the sportsman racer? I thought they hated us. That's that's what everybody was well, not everybody. That's what a that's what a number of people said that they had a had a, a notepad up there. If you're going to Indy, put your name here and we'll make sure you got a pit spot. That's pretty cool. That's that good is. that they thought of that and provided for that. Uh let's see. Nitro Joe said, Well, if you notice, most of the Epping national racers didn't go to Indy. Yeah, no, I, I honestly did not pay attention as to how many went from one to the other. Yeah. Uh, I could only assume that if the race wrapped up on Sunday when it was supposed to, that there probably would have been more people going, but that's just an assumption on my part. I mean, looking at it from the it's it, it's easy to do it from the outside looking in, but if I was at New England Dragway on Sunday and it was raining or whatever, and they're looking at going Monday or Tuesday, and the following week is Indy, I'd be like, you know what? I'm sorry, but I'm out of here. That's that would be that. That's me. Right, but the other thing you have to keep in mind is points and what you're allowed to claim in division versus out and all that stuff. I mean, it's not for some people. And let's face it. If you're going from Epping to Indy, you're probably locked up in a points chase. Right. Uh, a casual racer like me will just say, screw the local event. I'm going out to Indy. Right. Yeah. So if you got someone racing both events, it's probably because it has points implications and, and they have to. Um, especially this time of year, right? Because it's not like it's in the beginning or the middle of the year. Right. I mean, and up here, we're getting down to the bitter end because we have right. one divisional left in, what, uh, like two weeks, basically? Yep. Down in Virginia. Um, and then it's just going to be, you know, who's going to who's gonna chase other events outside of, you know, the division. Right. So right, right. You know, whoever's up there. So, uh, let's see. Nitro Joe again said he 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 noticed it just because he does the he does the stat stuff. Sure. So he right. was he you know that's what he pays big attention to. Which what is, is the, does he know what is the number of people that went from Epping to uh, to Indy? Just curiosity. I'm gonna say I'm gonna guess and say six. Well, I know he's listening, so let, uh, he might he might not have an exact total. I'm just yeah. curious. Even if you could ballpark it, Joe, that would be cool. I'd say probably six to ten, somewhere around there. Yeah, because I know that, like for the divisional, there were I can think of two um, top alcohol funny cars. One was DJ Cox, and the other one was um, Brian Solid, Brian Golick. I mean, we, we another thing that we don't know, he might know, but we don't. Was there any people from D3 out here? Oh, no. There wouldn't be because that was make up for the national event that was earlier in the year. So yeah, back in June, yeah. Um, so Frank Volpe said eight. Joe says less than 10. So we'll go with between eight yeah. and 10. All right. So we were in the ballpark. Yeah, and he said a lot of them probably went to Bowling Green as well because that's the traditional event in that area before Indy as well. And gotcha. they also had the same problem too. They ended up getting rained out and having to race on Monday. But the nice thing about Bowling Green is it's, what, maybe a two-hour drive from there to Indy. Across the country, yeah, right. Yeah, right. top skipping a jump away. 
So, because I know Louisville to Indy, you can be there in like an hour and a half, just because I've done that trip numerous times. Gotcha. So. Gotcha. All right. So I need to put a wrap on this, but a couple of things that I want to do before I put a wrap on it uh, is obviously first thank our guests for coming on. Uh, it was awesome that she took the time. Um, I don't have the full race results. I promise I'll have them for you next week, but I do know that Ray Butler is our 2023 super street champion for Lebanon Valley. Yeah. For, for Nessa. Yeah. Um, and I would also like to give a monster shout out, uh, to my boy, JL. Uh, Jason Lawrence, who wins in everything except for when he sits in my car. Um, <laughs> congratulations. And I will tell you that if you ever get to the point, which I'm sure we all have and we probably all will again, but if you ever get to the point where you're beating your head against the wall and you're wondering why the hell we do what we do and spend what we spend, please take a minute to watch the clip of uh, Jason's dad when Jason's wind light came on when he won the 50 grand. I believe Lee was filming it. Not 100% sure on that, but very, the, Jason's dad is, from what I know of him, a man of very little emotion. And he didn't jump up and down or scream and yell, but if you watched him, that was, without screaming and yelling, that was the loudest scream I've ever heard in my life, right? Yeah, it was when, like he passed out. It was right. like he passed out. Walked over to that jersey barrier and leaned up against it. I mean, that was like, I'm proud of my son. I'm proud of the operation. I can't believe this just happened. Holy shit. Right. I mean, it, one little move, one little gesture that he did was like spoke volumes and it was great to watch. Absolutely. And also not to take anything away from our buddy, Jason. How about the guy at the million with the open trailer, the, the POS pickup and a tent? Yep. Yep. I actually went out to my car and hit my delay box with a hammer. <laughs> no that was incredible um there was a lot of really cool things that came out of the million one obviously my highlight was jason uh number two was that gentleman uh that i would love to try and get on the show if we could um the person he beat in the final, uh, Shane Carr, he's a bad dude, too. Uh, I loved seeing him make it to the final. Uh, I got to watch Cisco make some passes. Um, this was probably the most I've watched on live stream, the, uh, the OG Million. And it was cool. It, I really enjoyed it. Um, it's just, you know, the packages that these dudes put together. and. The fact that a guy went in there foot breaking and was dominating is just, I mean, if you look at his previous rounds, he was not getting lucky. I mean, I didn't see every round and he might've gotten fairly lucky, but this dude was on fire. He was absolutely on fire. He was killer. Um, in my opinion, he earned every nickel that he won. That's for sure. And he proved that a Vega can find its way to the winner's circle. Unfortunately, I believe he used up all the luck for all the Vega owners in the world <laughs> forever. <laughs> but whatever. At least I got to see someone do it. <laughs> so, well, so D. Pascal has until, what, February or March, whenever the Gators are run, to, 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 build, the, to uh, build his Vega power back up. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, he's he's knocked down a couple of wins in, in that car, too. So, yeah, they're all taking my thunder. There's no more luck left for me after they win everything. Yeah, it's like, you, you know what you guys need to do? You're just, all you Vega people should take one. I'll, I'll have Tanya make them. 
the the canisters from the Monsters Inc. lab floor. Yep. They build the energy up in. Yeah. Right. You know, I'm gonna that's that's your that's all you Vega guys that I know. That's gonna be your Christmas present this year. There you go. That works. <laughs> Put that it works. on the back window of the car and go, here I am. And if it works for me, I'll even pay you for it too. So it'll work out. <laughs> <laughs> so, Good. Yeah, it, was, it was a great past week week and a half of everything a lot of great racing at maple grove um i'm not going to torture you with with results and um because i actually i actually have them up and ready it's up to you do we have uh who do we have for a guest for next week i am working on that i'm open to suggestions so here's here's going to be my suggestion for you. Let's see if we could get Jason Lawrence on. Okay. And let's do results next week, and uh, let's get some insider feedback from actually attending the OG Million with Jason. We can do that. How's that sound? One other quick thing. Um, how about Doug Coletta and Top Fuel? Yeah, um, but. Destroyed the car, almost destroyed the car. Yep. And but took home win number fifty. In a backup car. In a backup car. Yep. Canopy the, versus no canopy. How about the very first pass in the backup car, setting low ET for the event? Now the the big thing too was did anybody come close to three hundred in the eighth? Because I know that was a a topic of conversation going in. Yeah. That was, I will tell you, my prediction went out the window because I thought that if it was going to happen, it would have happened this weekend. I don't know how close anyone went. I know in the little bit that I watched, I saw 336 in the 1,000 foot, um, but I do not, I, I don't, I did not see any eighth mile, mile per hour times. All right. uh, maybe that's something else I'll look at. Oh, D, Chris D. Pascal also said, "How about Keith Maris? He found he got the uh, he got the alpha sorted yeah. out, found his way to the winner's circle." Yep, yep, and super gas. Yep, and we all know not that I want to put the jinx on him, but we all know that that's not going to be his last win in that car. <laughs> that's nope. for damn sure. Nope, not at all. But yeah, let's do that. We'll do results next week for Maple Grove, and um, I will reach out to. Jason, and maybe we could get the whole crew on Lee and um, yeah, his his dad, Rich, and his dad. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I will have all the revolt, all the results from Nesson also, because it was a two day race. Um, and I believe someone took your dead on money too, if I'm not mistaken. With no box. Right. By the way. Right. Took all my money with no box so, I'm, so I'm, I'm gonna have a delay box for sale i'm getting rid of it i'm gonna start swapping feet <laughs> <laughs> i can't do any worse <laughs> well, you never know huh? never know right <laughs> um but yeah so we'll have results from maple grove we'll have results from charlotte nessa and maybe the lawrence clan and um lee zane and i'm sorry i can't i'm drawing a blank on their other partner in that Bud, you cut out. Oh, Bud McNasby. So, all right, cool. Cool. Oh, and Joe said the stereo was blaring in the alpha because he did he put a stereo on that too. Oh, yeah, it's a surprise, right? No, no, yeah, not at all. So, all right, cool. Well, thank you to Keista for coming on and hanging out with us, Pete. Thank you for. I know you had kind of a screwed up day, but thank you for making it on. And uh, thank you for hopefully if everything goes well, be on next week. And um, I will do some digging. All right. Cool. All thank right, everybody. Know. As the old saying goes, we are out of here. Have a great night. If you are headed to Charlotte, please drive carefully. And if you're racing, please race carefully. Enjoy it. I don't know. Is it four wide this weekend or is it regular? I'd be lying if I told you. Yeah, same here. I do not know. All right, gang. Have a great night. Like I said, if you're heading out, be careful. Talk to you later. See you guys. Bye.